Okay, we're going to talk about a new quantity that will be useful called the quality factor. We use the symbol Q for quality factor. I'm going to give a definition of it and then we'll, we'll express it in several different forms and, and talk about its significance. So it's defined as one-half times the ratio of the natural angular frequency to the damping factor. So it's it's a ratio of natural resonance to damping factor. So think about this for a moment. If there's no damping, then alpha goes to zero. Remember, alpha for the series, uh, RLC, is one-half R over L. This is for series RLC. So if there's no damping, it means there's no resistance. Alpha goes to zero, and therefore Q goes to infinity. The quality factor goes to infinity. If much damping, then uh, of course alpha eventually goes to something, I guess we could say it goes to infinity, and the quality factor goes to zero. Okay, so think of it, uh, think like you had a tuning fork. There's actually a quality factor defined for a tuning fork. So this is not an electrical quantity, this is something that is characteristic of any second order oscillatory system. So a tuning fork is designed, it has a spring uh, constant to it, uh, based on the stiffness of the metal, and it has a mass to it, and when you strike it, uh, you actually give it energy, and then that energy basically interchanges between being stored as kinetic energy in the motion of the mass, and then potential energy being stored in the spring or the stiffness of the metal. And that energy is exchanged back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and over time it, it dissipates. But a good tuning fork is one that would have a very high quality factor, which means it's, it's a quality resonator. So we often talk about quality factor in the context of wanting something that just kind of rings and rings and rings and doesn't die out. So this would be similar to a, a spring and a mass. If we want something that just kind of keeps going and going, it would have, uh, we'd want a high quality factor. Um, you could talk about a pendulum clock as having a quality factor, um, so forth. So uh, let's uh, consider a different uh, definition of it. So let's note the following. I'm going to write one half omega n over alpha. And then I'm going to replace alpha with its definition for uh, for the RLC circuit, series RLC, which is one half R over L. Uh, the one halves cross out. We end up with omega n times L over R. Omega n is 1 over root of LC times L over R. I can pull the L inside the radical. We get square root of L over C over R. And therefore, we can write a d new definition for, or an alternate definition for quality factor, which is characteristic impedance divided by resistance. So right both circle both of these, or box both of these, they're both very useful. Now I want to look at another interpretation for the quality factor, and this one is related to energy. So we want to think of it as um, a ratio between the amount of energy, the total amount of energy stored, which could at any moment be stored completely in the electric field of the capacitor, or completely in the magnetic field of the inductor, or any combination thereof. but uh, you know that, for instance, with a, a mass and a spring system, if there's no dampening, then the total energy remains constant, right? It's just moving back and forth between kinetic and potential, kinetic and potential. potential. Same thing for an electrical system. So we're going to look at the quality factor as the ratio of the total energy that is currently or at any moment stored in the system divided by the average energy or the amount of energy that is dissipated every cycle, okay? And then we multiply it by 2 pi. So let's write this. Q is equal to 2 pi times energy stored divided by energy dissipated per cycle. All right, so let's, let's try to work this out. So we have 2 pi. Now how much energy do we have stored? Uh, we could look at the maximum amount of energy that is stored in the capacitor or the maximum amount of energy that's stored at the inductor. And uh, I'm going to use, um, well, I'll write both, It'll, but I'll end up using the inductor um, energy. So it's one-half CV 
squared. I'm going to put Vm squared. M, this is magnitude. Okay, so we have sinus, basically a sinusoidal. It is damp, going to be dampened, but at any moment, it is sinusoidal, and this amplitude here, that is Vm. So I could write it as 1 half Cv squared, or 1 half L I squared, Im squared. And that is going to be divided by the amount of energy that is dissipated in the resistor. Well, that could be I squared. I'm going to write RMS. Remember, the energy in a resistor is the RMS current, or RMS current squared times the resistance. Or I could write it also equivalently as VRMS squared over resistance. And for sinusoid, for sine wave, the RMS is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 of the magnitude. So let's proceed. We'll use the uh, energy stored in the inductor, 1 half Li magnitude squared, divided by, um, I'm going to rewrite IRMS in terms of the magnitude, I magnitude over square root of 2 squared times R. Oh, and I forgot, this here is the power. We need to take this and multiply it times the period, which is going to be equal to, we could say, 2 pi over omega n, or omega, it's actually over omega d, the dampened frequency. Okay, so let's rewrite that. Um, so I have t period, which I'm going to rewrite as 2 pi over omega d. Now, I'll make a case for this in a moment, but I'm going to replace omega with, I mean, omega d with omega n, with the claim that omega n is approximately equal to omega d, and we'll see that uh, shortly. So what do we have here? A bunch of stuff that's going to cancel. So we have the i m's that cancel. We have the one-halves that cancel. We have the two pi's that cancel. And we end up with L over R times omega D, which I'm going to say is approximately L over R omega N. And that we've already seen up above as L times omega N being equal to square root of L over C, which is Z naught over R. And so we do see that uh, this interpretation for Q is, uh, is appropriate. All right, we want to take a a qualitative view of Q. I mentioned earlier that uh, a high Q means little energy is lost per cycle. All right, and a low Q is much energy is lost per cycle. In both cases, eventually, eventually, all energy dies out. But the question is, how long does it take, or how long does the oscillation last? Q, the quality factor, can help, can help us estimate this. Before estimating how long this lasts, let me return to uh, a little exercise uh, on comparing omega n and omega d. I probably should have done this earlier, okay, but let's, uh, let's do it now. It'll be useful for going forward. We have uh, defined omega d as the square root of omega n squared minus alpha squared. Okay. Now we also have defined alpha in terms of the quality factor. Or maybe, actually, let's, let's rewrite. What we, our first definition of the quality factor is one-half the ratio of omega n over alpha. Remember? So let's write alpha in terms of quality factor. We have one-half omega n over q. Let's plug that in here. And we have omega d is equal to and now you see there's a omega n squared that's shared, so I'm going to pull that out, and we get 1 minus the quantity 1 fourth q squared. All right. Now consider consider a value of uh, q equal to 2. In this case, omega d is equal to omega n times the square root of it'll be 1 minus 1 over 16, so it'll be 15 sixteenths, which is approximately, I believe, 97 percent. 
of omega n. Right? Now to be sure, if we had a quality factor of one half, then uh, we'd have one over four times one fourth, and we'd get omega d is equal to zero. Okay, so it's not that omega d is always close to omega n, but it very quickly approaches omega n even for reasonably small values of q. So um, going back to the previous exercise when we were looking at uh, defining or interpreting q as the ratio of stored energy to dissipated energy per cycle, and I had made that replacement of omega d with omega n, this is what justifies that. So if, there's, if, if you're trying to estimate the quality factor and it's even reasonably large, say 2, uh, or more, then that approximation is, is pretty good. Okay, so we will um, assume that omega d is approximately omega n. This is for q, you know, somewhere in the range of greater than or equal to 2. So consider the rate at which the voltages and current decay. Okay, they decay according to an e to the minus alpha t. Now here's a question. Um, after q cycles or periods, um, how much attenuation has occurred or how much decay? And this sounds silly, but I'm just I'm just going to throw that out there. We have this quality factor q. Let's just try this out and see if it, it gives us any insight. So um, we have e to the minus alpha, and then we want to have a time that is equal to q cycles. So there's q cycles times whatever the period is. All right, the period is going to be 2 pi over omega n. All right. So it's actually 2 pi over omega d precisely, but we're going to use omega n as an approximation here, a reasonable approximation. Okay, so this is our approximate cycle period. Now, we're going to replace uh, alpha with, um, with an expression for q. We'd already seen before. Let me write Q one more time. Q is equal to one half of omega n over alpha. So we can write alpha is equal to one half omega n over Q, right? So we'll use that here. E to the minus alpha times one half omega n over alpha times two pi over alpha and a bunch of things cancel. So the alphas cancel, the twos cancel, and the omega n's cancel, and we end up with e to the minus pi, which evaluates to um, approximately 4.3 percent. Okay, so we can say after q cycles, the voltage, the v's and i's, um, our, our amplitudes have been attenuated, uh, have decayed, have decayed to about four percent of their initial values. Okay. In terms of energy, the energy stored, total energy stored, uh, the decay would be according to. Um, 4.3% or 0 0.00043 squared or 0.2%. Okay, so 99.8% of the energy has been dissipated uh, after Q periods. So what's handy about this is Suppose a system has a Q of uh, 3. If I were to plot this by hand, all right, I'm just making something up here, but um, I would basically have visibly about three cycles. So I'd have 1, 2, 3. All right. 
So without you know doing any kind of numerical you know computation of this of my solution and get some data points on here, I can just kind of sketch this out and uh, estimate how many you know how many oscillations I would see, uh, how many periods I would see. So if, if there are the Q is 3, then we'd expect about 3 oscillations. If it's 30, we'd expect about 30 oscillations. Okay, lastly, I'm going to just return to the differential equation and the characteristic equation and show that uh, um, the quality factor can be used in expressing those, exp those equations as well. So we had, um, recall that we had for the capacitor for the series RLC, we had the second derivative of the capacitor voltage plus 2 alpha derivative of the capacitor voltage plus omega n squared is equal to 0 or Vs, sorry. Uh, this was also equivalent to the characteristic equation or we could equivalently write the characteristic equation which was S squared plus 2 alpha S plus omega n squared. Now we can use the expression Q is equal to one half omega n over alpha, or in other words, alpha is equal to one half omega n over Q, to rewrite the differential equation as VC double dot plus, and let's substitute that expression in for alpha, uh, the one half and the two cancel, and we'll have omega n over Q times Vc derivative plus omega n squared is equal to Vs. And the characteristic equation becomes S squared plus omega n over Q S plus omega n squared. So this is just another form, not to scare anyone, but uh, uh, if you are trying to find out how ringy something is, it might be useful if you're given the differential equation or the characteristic equation, it might be useful to put it into this form that uses Q because right away you'll be able to find Q and uh, determine, you know, how, for instance, estimating how many oscillatory cycles uh, will occur before the uh, energy dissipates.